What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. No, no, no. This is your motivation guy. I'm here to motivate you. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. So, competitive Fortnite is a complicated game. And, you know, one of the most common struggles players have, especially, you know, when they're not quite as experienced as the pros, is their early game. Oof. There are simply so many factors, guys, to the early game, like so much RNG, and, and really it's no surprise why most players struggle to make it out alive, even half of the time, right? And that's why in today's video, we're going to be doing a guide on everything that you need to know about early game. By the time we finish this video, look, you're going to have all the necessary information to dominate every single early game, whether you're playing on a competitive level or just playing public matches. All right, guys. So before we start, make sure to check out our website, ProGuides.com, if you're looking to learn even more about the ins and outs of Fortnite, all right, from courses designed to help you guys improve in the most efficient way possible, one-on-one -on -one coaching with real pro players, and so much more, ProGuides.com is your one one-stop shop for improving at Fortnite, so you gotta be sure to check it out. And finally, my friends, for today's question of the day, I want you to tell me, all right, what is your favorite thing about Fortnite? This can be anything from building and editing mechanics to the storyline to weapons, all right? Anything else, whatever. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite thing is about Fortnite, because I just really wanna hear this. I know a lot of people love the in-game tournaments. I mean, the fact that almost anyone can compete for real money <laughs> and make a name for themselves, yo, that's amazing. And it's something that we've never really seen from an esports title until Fortnite came around. All right, so be sure to let us know in the comments down below. All right, guys, bunch of crunch army. It's about that time. Come on now, let's get hype. It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Woo! And let's get this going. I'm hungry. So, as you probably know, being inconsistent in early game is basically a death sentence in Fortnite. A lot of us definitely learned this one the hard way, and one of the most important things when it comes to consistency is finding a good drop spot. Finding a good drop spot in Fortnite is honestly way easier than most of us actually think it is. Okay, so if you already have a drop spot, that's great, but if not, then I'm gonna show you how to exactly find a good drop spot. Who's ready? Yeah, I see you. All right, first up, you gotta decide what factors make a drop spot good for you. Okay, just list off every single thing that you like to have in your drop spot. For the sake of the video, we have our own example. Okay, so here it is. Our list includes an average amount of players, an upgrade bench, at least 10 total chests, and some slur barrels, or another for age shield item. After you developed your list, I recommend heading to the website fortnite.gg and just heading through the map, analyzing each spot, named or unnamed, small or large, to see if it fits what you like in the drop spot. All right, so for me, the closest location I could find was Craggy Cliffs, which met every piece of criteria on this list. Okay, so if you can't find a spot that matches all your criteria, I recommend either being a bit less strict in your list, maybe removing one or two things that aren't really as important to you, or, you know, making a brand new list if you feel like that would even be better. But some simple adjusting should do the trick. All right, my friends, next up, you're gonna wanna simply try the new spot you found with your criteria. And I recommend playing five to 10 games at the spot, preferably an arena if your goal is competitive, so, you know, you can just get a good idea of whether or not you actually like the spot. From here, and I mean like right here. If you don't like the spot, then head back to your list and just find another spot with your criteria. Or adjust your criteria if there was a certain aspect that you didn't like. All right, next up is to develop a loot route with the landing spot that you found. All right, loot routes, woo! You know, this is a pretty simple concept. Simply a route, like within your drop spot, that you follow to maximize your looting efficiency. That's what a loot route is, all right? All you gotta do is just, you know, head into the battle lab and figure out an exact area that you like to land at to loot. It doesn't really have to be the best area of the whole spot, but it needs to be good enough to give you a solid loot. From there, all right, find a specific spot within that area you're comfortable landing at and develop an exact pattern to follow. In order to reach all the chests and four loot spawns, you can reach within as a short a time frame as possible. So finding a good loot route as a whole really, really isn't too difficult of a process, all right? Like all you really have to do is try a few different routes within your spot and just really see what you're comfortable with. Obviously guys, like the more loot and other positive factors, the better, but it's most important to find a loot route that you could just stick to, that you know you're comfortable fighting in, right? And you feel this really fits your play style. Ultimately, like the process of finding your loot route just comes down to really trial and error. 
Also, if you feel like you're struggling to find a good loot route or job spot, you can always talk with one of our coaches over at ProGuys.com who can guide you in the right direction and help you find that perfect spot to maximize your performance. All right, be sure to check that out if you're still struggling because our coaches are the best in the business and can really help you a ton to optimize your gameplay, all right? All right, so the next topic we're gonna be discussing is fighting an early game. Oof. So, all right, you find your job spot and you're happy with it, all right, good. You follow your loot route, great, but you still seem to be getting killed in early game. It happens to a ton of us, I definitely understand, and ultimately, this really comes down to pure fighting skill. Fighting in early game is definitely different than other parts of the game, right? Because you're almost always are gonna be in some sort of scuff situation. Either you won't have a lot of materials, or maybe you have bad loot, you know, your opponent might have better position, or one of the thousands of other situations that just happens during this time of the game. And it's really just difficult to really get good at these early game fights and really come out on top. But don't worry, my friends, because your motivation guy <laughs> and his box of Bunch of Crunch are both here to help, let's go. The biggest issue people tend to have in early game is that they're too aggressive when it comes to fighting. You know, it's best to loot up, you know, farm up, and really get full shield before you even think to start fighting. The second you just throw yourself into a fight when you're not prepared to do it, oh my goodness. This is the second you're putting your entire game at risk. Basically, when you're in early game, always make sure you're fully set up before you start pushing fights, okay? Another common mistake players make in early game fights is letting fights go on for too long. In all honesty, this is a mistake that, you know, I still make sometimes, I can't lie. <laughs> so if you do it, I definitely understand the struggle, guys. What I used to really go through and still go through even now is, you know, sometimes I can get into an early game fight and it, it just turns really long, like a drawn out battle that lasts until the storm comes in. And then one of us will either just rush in and then 50-50 the other player or the storm would just fully come in and we both eventually die of it. It's annoying. So the best way to avoid fights being drawn out is to really simply try to be the aggressor in every fight and really maintain pressure on your opponent throughout the fight, right? Like utilize your peace control. We talked about this plenty of times before, along with general box fighting skills to outplay your opponent and then put them in a situation that they can't get out of. Ultimately, aggression plus smart plays usually equals an easy kill. Okay, so our next and final section of this video is all about methods to actually improve your early game skill. Now, let me say this, improving at early game is pretty hard, can't lie. But you know, there are plenty of steps that you can follow to make the process at least a little bit easier. So the first and maybe like most obvious way to improve is simple repetition. You know, like if you're trying to learn a skill or really get better at something, whether it's in real life, or in a game, all right? The easiest way to do this is just doing it over and over again. And if you play early game over and over at the same drop spot with the same loot route, you're gonna subconsciously learn and adapt to a ton of different situations. And you're gonna make progress, man. And you're gonna see yourself really, really improve. One other way to indirectly improve at early game is to sharpen your box fighting skills. All right, so most early game fights are not typically box fights. Obviously, there are exceptions, but you know, most of the time, you're not gonna have the materials for a full build fight, right? And you're gonna end up just fighting someone inside of a building or in close quarters in the open. Whichever one of these are the case, you know, being a skilled box fighter is gonna make a massive difference anyways. Like knowing how to peek properly and create opportunities for shots, that's gonna prove insanely helpful in early game fights. And, and you're gonna find yourself coming out on top way more often if you improve in this skill set. All right, so the best way to improve box fighting for early game is a fair mix of closed in maps like clicks box fight map, along with open box fights, which you can do by simply building a platform in your creative world and having one player box up and the other player push. Another method to really improve at early game, guys, um, is really to do a realistic 1v1s in creative. Realistic 1v1s typically involve some sort of material cap, you know, realistic loot, and really locations from the real game, making them amazing for practicing early to mid-game fighting, right? Okay, so if you take some time and you do realistic 1v1s against a good player, you're definitely gonna make progress, I'm telling you. And the final method to improve in early game, oh, I can't say this more than enough, is to VOD review. Most of us know what VOD reviewing is, but if you don't, then you gotta check out our other video from a few months ago named the perfect guy to VOD reviewing. Dope video. 
This video goes into depth on the topic and is definitely a really good starting point for you guys looking to go into competitive. All right, overall guys, we recommend Bob Reviewing to find holes in your strategy and you're gonna find specific ways to improve in fights as well. By looking over your gameplay repeatedly and trying to spot mistakes, let me tell you what's gonna happen. <laughs> you're gonna be able to patch the issues in your early game constantly and you're gonna make a lot of progress as a result. Overall, man, let me say this, like if you use those methods to practice along with simply practicing your early game directly, yeah, you're definitely gonna make progress when it comes to your early game and you're gonna find yourself surviving into end game way more often. So before we end, we're gonna throw some timestamps on the screen for you guys, just in case you wanna go back and see certain parts again. All right, so here they are. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Man, with that said, you know, that's gonna be it for today's video. You know, hopefully these tips from today's video really help you guys improve in your early game. You know, whether you're a casual or a competitive player, man, I want you guys to succeed, not only in this game, but also in life. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and join the Bunch of Crunch army by clicking that subscribe button, all right? Because we're on the march to 1 million subs. I can't wait, I'm so excited. Also, if you like to keep up with our community, be sure to join the community subreddit and Discord server. We're gonna be putting a link, both of those, down in the description for you guys. So check it out when you can and keep eating that bunch of crunch and I'll see you soon.